I want to start out uh, before I teach today in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Father, like in the book of Acts, Father, we say, behold their threatenings. That they want to suppress the name of Jesus, they want to suppress the gospel, they want to suppress the truth of your word. And Father, like the saints of old, we ask that you would stretch forth the arm of your holy child Jesus, and that you would grant unto us boldness to speak your truth and to walk in kingdom in this day and in this hour. Father, I come before you as your bond servant. My desire is to simply become a vessel or an avatar that your spirit fills and that Jesus would speak to us in this message today. That I could set myself aside and just let the kingdom flow. That we could understand the times that we're living in and know how to respond based upon the kingdom of God. And I thank you. And I praise you for it in Jesus' name. You know, originally I was going, Mary and I were going to do this as a podcast earlier this week. And we sat down and we have been running like crazy to try to catch up with things after being on vacation. And uh, after a long day on Thursday, and it was actually it was after hours, we got everything set up and we were probably about 35 minutes in, into the recording and the uh, program that records the audio just shut down. This poof is all gone. And so we thought, well, maybe we ought to do something else with it first. And so I want to kind of put a pin in understanding the kingdom series. And it's going to take at least two sessions for me to deal with what I'm calling a kingdom response to what's going on in America today. Now, I want to give a little bit of history. In 2007, we had a man running for the presidency of the United States that promised change. And part of the change was he promised transparency, he promised many things, but in the middle of this, he said something that nobody caught on. He said that we are going to fundamentally change America. Now, this, this, this fundamentally change America, I believe, was a signal to the operators of the elite that it was time for their pivotal plan for America to be initiated. This wasn't his idea. Now, have, have, we, have we woke up to the fact yet that it has probably been since President Kennedy and his assassination that we have not had a president elected by the people in office. That they were set in office by the elite and we had the illusion of voting and electing a president. And ever since then, every president has been nothing but a puppet on their strings. You see, in 2007, the reality is that regardless of which one got in for president, the only difference was one drives his car at 60 miles an hour and the other one that got elected likes to drive his at 225 miles an hour. And I believe actually it was the sovereignty of God that allowed our current president to get elected because the body of Christ is in a coma and it took somebody like him to begin waking us up. Come on now. If the other one would have got elected, we would have all still been in a slumber as they progressively, there's a reason why it's called the progressive movement, because they are progressively moving you toward hell. In fact, in my next book, one of the things, I, I, and we can blame this on Doug Woodward with his books, is that we need to understand that, you know, we, I, I talk about in the Shiner Directive how that they introduced in the, in the, in the 19th century evolution and, and eugenics. Well, that was part of the equation that rose up in the Nazi movement. The other one was the spiritualist movement that happened in the... And, it was, and the spiritualist movement is what emboldened the esoteric community to begin taking over the democratic side of things 
and called it progressivism. Although they originally tried it first with the Republicans with Teddy Roosevelt. He, run, he ran on a progressive platform. They tried it. It didn't take very well there. So they did it on the Republicans. And now to be or, or the Democrats and to be truthful, both sides are basically in the progressive camp. Some are flaming radically progressives and some are moderate progressives. But progressivism is a poison that wants to destroy everything that America wanted. But we need to ask ourselves, and this is something nobody asks, if you're going to fundamentally change America, what were the fundamentals that America was based on? Two things, of course, everybody knows the Constitution. And how many know that almost every official anymore, that when they're sworn into office, they, they, they give an oath with the raising of their right hand that they will, they will defend the Constitution of the United States against all threats, foreign and domestic. I did that when I joined the military. And then they proceed to dismantling the Constitution. And one of the things I want to do today is I'm calling heaven to record. Behold these oath breakers. Father, they laid their hand on a Bible. And they said, I will keep this oath, so help me God. And so, Father, let fall on their heads what are due oath breakers in the name of Jesus. Until they repent and undo their evil deeds in Jesus' name. But something else happened when you begin studying the formation of this nation. There was a time that really what was going on in the colonies was this short of debauchery. Very few, there were very few of those living together that were married. And there was debauchery. And, and so among the founding fathers, whether they were Christian, Masonic, whatever, how many know there was a hodgepodge of everything? They, the, the, big, the big debate was, are we a moral enough of a people that we can handle the freedom of a republic? Then entered the great revivals of Jonathan Edwards and many others. And it was upon the very backbone of those revivals of the holiness of God and getting right with Almighty God that they were able to build this republic. So we have the foundation, a foundational thing of the Constitution. We also have a foundational thing of understanding even the Masons that were not Christians, they had a respect for Moses and they had a respect for the moral teachings of Jesus. It was on that morality. Even the last speech that Washington gave, and there was never, ever any inclination that he ever converted to Christianity. Now, there, there are some things that, uh, that before he died, he converted to Catholicism, which I do not consider Christianity. I don't. It is a blending of all esotericism. That he converted to that. But even he said, as long as we remain a religious and a moral people. That's the foundation, the morality that they drew, not all the, drew from all the great teachers that had ever lived on planet Earth to include Moses and Jesus. One of the reasons they hate the Ten Commandments is not because of of the religious aspects of it, it's the morality of it. It represents a morality that they stand against. And I think this really needs to be a wake-up call for everybody that voted Democrat in the last election. If you call yourself a Christian, you just got what you voted for. It's time for us to wake up out of mind control. It is time for us to wake up out of spiritual slumber. And it's time for us to hit our knees because our very nation is in the balance with what's going on. We have seen in the last few weeks from the Supreme Court to our political figures to college professors, they are all seeking both to remove the Constitution and our moral foundation from this nation. They have even gone as far here lately as to say, if you're a Christian, you have no right to run for political office. 
Well, what happened to religious freedom in this nation? You know, there was a time that the Christians in office stood for your right as an atheist to run for office because there was freedom in this nation. And at the same time they're attacking Christians, they don't attack other religions for having some similar stance like that of Islam. When was the last time that you saw anyone in Islam sued for a stance? There was even, there's even a situation this week where uh, Bible publishers are being sued for what's in the Bible. They didn't write it. They're just publishing it. I don't like it. I'm going to sue. I tell you what, there's a lot of things in this old book that the flesh of Mike Lake, the unregenerated carnal flesh of Mike Lake did not like. But I found out that God, there's one thing about Almighty God, and this is something that we need to realize. You, you know, in, in, the, in, in Einstein's trying to explain all things, one of the things he believed is the, the, the constant in the universe, the only constant in the universe was the speed of light. Well, we found out now it's secular that it changes. So there's no constant there. The only true constant in this universe is Almighty God. Why? Because he created the universe and he resides outside of it. He is not affected by it. But he is unchanging. In Malachi it says, I am the Lord God, I change not. Therefore you, you old schmuckheads, aren't consumed. Now that may be the Ozarkian translation of Malachi. But because he is unchangeable, and one characteristic is above his love, is he is holy, he is holy, he is holy. He is absolutely righteous, he is absolutely right, and all creation must bow its knee and are accountable to him, not the other way around. I don't know if we're going to get into the next few weeks, but one of the, the interesting things, and I just want to touch on this, is somehow what, they have, what esoteric societies have done in infiltrating Christianity they have changed the concept of the cross in that the cross no longer changes us. It changed God. Because of grace, I can continue in my sin. I can ignore the commandments of God because now, God, you're stuck with me. Let me tell you something. He's unchangeable. The cross changed us to match him, not the other way around. When you're preaching that, you are preaching another gospel. You know, I, I, I was thinking this morning, what if Jesus just began his ministry today in America? And he got on the airwaves. And he began his sermon by saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He would be accused of hate speech. You see, the best of us he preached this to the Jews. He preached this to Israel. The, if the best of us need to be told to repent, dear God, how much does the rest of us need to be told to repent? And whenever the kingdom of God comes at hand, repentance must precede the coming of the kingdom in the same way that John the Baptist had to precede the coming of Messiah. Now, guys, in the, in the area of, of eschatology, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. How many know that for the first time and in, in for a long time, we have, we have had four blood moons, or we're going to have four blood moons fall on holy Jewish days, or holy, not Jewish days, but holy biblical days. I've been reading too many sites on the blood moon that I'm quoting them instead of what I know. How many know the feasts of the Lord are not Jewish feasts, they're feasts of the Lord? They're biblical feasts. They're in the Bible. And they're all about Jesus. And so we have, we have four blood moons in the middle of this. We had a solar eclipse. And I think what's interesting is after the final blood moon, if I'm reading things right, we're going to have a lunar eclipse. Kind of interesting. But when you look at what these mean, blood moons seem to be directly connected to the Jewish people, and it, it announces God's going to do something, whether it's uh, setting them free or, or bringing judgment, because it can be both. Because one of the blood moons was during the Inquisition, you all of a sudden have Columbus opening up the New World, and a lot of the Jewish people were able to run to the New World for freedom to get away from the, the, the Inquisitions. And so it wasn't judgment on them as it was judgment 
to get them out of there, to get them out of harm's way. That's why within, uh, one, of the, in, in one of the most powerful things right now happening in Mexico is you have all these Mexicans that are, that are discovering their Hebraic heritage because a lot of them are of Jewish descent. And they're coming to Messiah and discovering the Torah and discovering the feasts of the Lord. And I tell you what, they're coming alive in the name of Jesus. And so we have these things going on. We also have, it seems that a solar eclipse during these days seems to be directly connected to the Gentile nations proclaiming judgment. And so you know, all, the, all the prophecy teachers are, 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 are teaching a lot of different things. Uh, many of them claim that these are today's signs that the beginning of the tribulation period is going to start in September. And that if you're a pre-tripper, Jesus is coming in September. Pack your bags. If you can figure out how to take them. And it also it talks about soon approaching cataclysms, cataclysms that are about to take a hold of the earth. And so I'm praying about these things, and uh, you see, I have this conundrum. You know, I, I only want to do what God wants me to do, and if God keeps giving me stuff, I'm going to keep doing it. And I have really been struggling on my next book, not struggling, because it's all up here, guys. And God keeps adding to it. My problem is finding the time with everything else we have going on in ministry to get it written down. And my goal, I wanted it done by September. And I had Rob Skeeb on Facebook. He says, why? Everything's going to end in September. You're not going to get it published, man. You know, tongue in cheek kind of thing. And so I'm praying about this on, on Thursday. Uh, no, actually, it was yesterday. I'm starting to get my days messed up. Yesterday, coming home from work. And uh, God drops a third book into my spirit. And I'm going, ah, I'm still trying to get the, I'm still on chapter one of the first one. And I got these, and I got these other 11 chapters that are just gnawing on my brain to get out. And now there's another book spooling in the background. And I think he was trying to make a point that if we do this thing right, there's going to be time to publish this book and the next book. And guys, it takes a year to formulate, to write. And even once I handed it to Defender Publishing last time, it took, it took four months just to get it in print after I handed it to him. Unless I can get jumping a TARDIS and go back in time, we're in trouble if things are going to wrap up in September. But perhaps there might be another point of view. I want you to go to Psalms chapter 2. And I want to start with verse 1. See if this doesn't sound like America today on the streets. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Now, we need to pay particular attention to verse 3. The kings of the earth and the rulers know that there is a God. His name is Yahweh Elohim. They know who Messiah is. They know who Jesus is. And they have rejected him. They also know that his law, his Torah, is still in effect for all the earth and especially those that are found in Messiah even though much of Christian theology denies that fact. And so they seek, because the, the Torah of God are cords, they are bands that set restrictions on what is acceptable behavior and what is not. It sets definitions on what is of God and what is of the kingdom of darkness. It says, this is of Yahweh, and this is of Nimrod. 
And so what they're doing today is they're saying that we're going to do everything we can off this one world government that we want to build and which we're going to demand that everybody be a part of, whether they want to or not. We have, but to do that, we have got to destroy these boundaries that God has set. Kind of looks like they're doing it, doesn't it? And how many of the body of Christ are coming into agreement with it? It's because of one of two things. Either you are a Sino, a Christian in name only. Jesus said, there will come a time, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things I told you to do? I will say to you, get out of here, get out of my presence, you workers of iniquity. You are, you are moving by the, by the life force of the kingdom of darkness and Lucifer itself. It's called the iniquity force. You thrive in it, and yet you say you serve me. Or the, there's a portion of the remnant today that don't know they're the remnant because they're under a witchcraft spell, and they're, they're comatose spiritually. And we're going to pray over that and stop, put a stop to that before we end today. Not just because I think I want to do it, it's because God's told me to do it. And then we'll loose it in the wild and just see how far it goes. But look at heaven's response. I love verse 4. He that sitteth on the throne, he that sitteth in heaven shall wring his hands and say, Oh my, oh me, what am I going to do? Look what they've done. Oh, it's like that prophetic word that I heard one time, Lester Summerall share. He was in a church, and this woman got up to prophesy, and she said, These are hard times, saith the Lord. These are, these are devastating times, saith the Lord. These are frightening times, saith the Lord. These times even scareth me, saith the Lord. <laughs> Is that what the word says? It says, He that sitteth in heaven shall laugh. And the Lord shall have them in derision. They come together to work. God laughs. And it's the Tower of Babel getting smashed all over again. Just think about that. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. God says, yet have I set my king on my holy hill of Mount Zion. Oh, guys, it would take me four hours to explain all that to you. You know, part of the reason for the Crusades was to stop the travesties that was happening because of the spread of Islam over Europe. But there was an, another agenda. The elite wanted to get one of their descendants on the throne of David in Jerusalem. They're still trying it today. And God says, I got my own king in mind. You try all this stuff, I will laugh at you. I'll put you in derision because it's my holy son, my anointed, that I'm going to set there. Now, I believe that this psalm is, has both a prophetic declaration that's going to happen when the Lord returns. As, you know, the, what's interesting when you really study, although the tribulation period is seven years long, it's not to the last three and a half years that really the Antichrist achieves global domination. And so Jesus got three and a half years in his ministry, and the Antichrist is going to get three and a half years in his. What's interesting is these guys have worked over 5,000 years to bring this about and can't hold it for longer than three and a half years. Isn't that interesting? And so we, we hear a lot of things that God's done with America, that he's going to judge it, that it's going to be wiped from the planet. We have, we have people moving out of America and I don't feel like I'm supposed to go anywhere. 
Maybe it's the army oath that I gave that I was going to protect this nation from all threats, foreign and domestic. Hoo yeah. I may have been army, but still there's Semper Fi right here, okay? Always faithful. And right now, the greatest threat to our nation is from within. Mad men and mad women driven mad by iniquity have taken over. But let me, let me share something with you. It's good. But guys, we're, it's, it's like I woke up one day and I'm living in an alternate universe. I jump on to check my, my aggregates for the news. I watch the president of Russia, Putin, ex-KGB, standing in an Eastern Orthodox church, confessing his Christian faith and rebuking America from leaving the Bible. And I, I sat there and I scratched my head and I thought, Father... I woke up in the twilight zone. When is Rod Serling going to come out and, and say, we're the ones who control the horizontal and the, <laughs> you know, you just feel like that's like, when, when, there, there has to be alternate reality universes because somehow or another I fell through the hole and I'm in the wrong universe. It's crazy. But one of the things I, I had learned in developing the Shiner Directive that we need to add into the mix of God judging America is that the elite have corrupted our seminaries. They began doing it in the 19th century that we had pastors and seminary professors holding seances in their churches. That was going on in the 19th century. That's one of the reasons that Pember wrote his, his magnus opus dealing with the watchers and all this stuff because he said it's all connected. It's, it's all there. This is the ancient stuff is trying to come back. I'm so glad that Dr. Tom Horn has republished that book. I've wore out one paperback copy. I had to get a new one, plus I've got it in digital, and you can't wear out Kindle copy. Because it, it, it speaks so much and he deals with spiritualism and, and the spiritism that's going on and how much it's there today. And they contaminated our seminaries and our pulpits. Then I reveal in the Shinar Directive how that Skull and Bones members were, were, they were sent to seminaries, Union Theological Seminary and many others to embed themselves and to begin bringing esoteric teachings to contaminate the gospel. And see, we're in this situation. I keep on hearing people say, the end is near because the gospel has been preached in all the earth. No, it ain't. And that's Ozarkian for no, it has not, for those that are grammar police. Another gospel has been preached over the last several generations that emanated from America and picked up in other places around the world that is not the gospel because it does not call for heartfelt bone shaking from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet repentance and have this come to Jesus and get right with God moment. It has been a syrupy, greasy grace that does not call for repentance, that does not believe in hell, that does not believe that there are consequences for sin, that now God's stuck with us because of the cross. That is another gospel. Therefore, we have got to have more time because the remnant needs to wake up and start preaching the true gospel and preaching the true word into all the world, then we can finish this thing up. But we have got to do, we have got to undo decades of damage. God help us. Our minds have not been free since the 1950s. Between MK Ultra, the Monarch Project, the Montauk Project, TV, Hollywood, free minds in America are hard to find. We have now got to turn on the TV to find out what to think, what is politically correct. 
I don't care what is politically correct. Why do I worry wh about what political Babylon thinks? Their opinion can burn in hell with the rest of them. But I outlined how from television to these mind control experiments to where there's now a new type. It's, it's not actually a, a cell phone tower, but it's, it's, oh, what's the acronym? I wish I'd have wrote it down. I, I think of so many things once I'm up here. But it, it's a, it's a, a ground-saturating EMF wave that they're beginning to install over America. It's all about mind control. And there's a bunch of people that have not had free minds to choose Jesus. Whether we're dealing with those in the Black Awakening, we're dealing with those that, that are in some form or fashion of the MK Ultra program or some, some variation of it all across this nation and around the world. And guys, let me tell you something. Mary and I have heard from people all over the globe. This is not just an American thing. It is worldwide that are struggling to get their minds free. We have been put into a spiritual coma by TV. And you can see it more pronouncedly in little children. You sit them in front of the TV and they go, house is on fire, Johnny. Time to eat ice cream, Johnny. I mean, it's once, once it's on, there's a reason why we used to call it the boob tube. Because boobs used to watch it. And that's what it turned you into is a mindless zombie. How do we add that in the mix? Because they have been systematically taking us away from God. The witchcraft in Hollywood. Hollywood was established by esoteric societies. And it has been profane from the very beginning. And they try, to, they try to create this one thing, why do we call it Hollywood? And they say, well, there was this development out there, and it was, well, that's all just a bunch of bull. Esotericism, we put this out there, which is a lie, so that we can hide the truth. All sorcery requires a 13-inch magician's wand made out of Hollywood. It's where the magic happens. And they have not only put us into a, 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 a trance, but they have literally socially engineered us into Babylon itself. They have socially engineered the whore into existence. And if most Americans in the breadbasket here, now I can't, you know, I can't speak for the West Coast or the East Coast, and sometimes I think those are the things that may burn with the judgment of God. When you listen to Dietrich Dudeman, he talks about L.A., he talks about uh, Las Vegas, Chicago, New York, Florida. There's still a lot of prophetic things. How many know that all that can be judged in the heartland of America where people actually have common sense is still functioning? I don't want a few. These people don't speak for me. I think they are so stuck on stupid that they've already knocked the S off of stupid. That's how stuck they are on stupid. I'm mad this morning. The concept of political correctness. They've taken over our educational systems. Our kids aren't taught to think, they're taught, they're taught to parrot. We're being conditioned, I document that. And the lengths they went to do that and establish that in education back in the 1940s. That our children are now conditioned to respond to a stimuli. They have turned us into Pavlov's dogs rather than being men and women that have integrity that can think. I've said this a million times, I think, over the, over the years. God gave you a brain, please start using it. Think through issues. Pray through issues. If all the world's doing it, you have a 99.9% .9 chance of being right if you do the exact opposite. I have also come to the conclusion, well, let me add something else. The, the last few weeks, 
right before I went on vacation, I had a man call me, and he shared with me a story. He was, had been an Assembly of God pastor that was severely wounded in ministry by, I think, goats in God's pasture. He left the ministry. He ended up in the Masonic Lodge. He went from the Masonic Lodge to Rosicrucianism, dedicated himself to it, ended up channeling and communicating with Ascended Masters. And then somehow or another, he got a hold of the Shinar Directive, and it all made sense to him. He discovered what Nimrod had started, and it brought him to repentance, and he renounced all that. And he was calling me to let me know that he had found a godly pastor that was still preaching the word, and he was submitting to that pastor and getting right with God. But he said, I want to tell you something. He said, when I was a Rosa Christian, we were taught to infiltrate the church. We were taught to go to seminary. I found others talked about how that they were in it, and they were not only told to go to seminary, they were told to become professors at those seminaries so they could infiltrate and begin interweaving esoteric knowledge into the understanding of the Word of God. Be a Sunday school teacher. Mary and I have been, you know, we, for, the, for the grandkids, we've we got, you know, Bible videos that are supposed to be really good. You know, Charlton Heston is the one giving the introduction, you know. And some of the stuff they said isn't even in the Bible. Some of it's actually the opposite of what the Bible says. They just kind of interweave nonchalantly into the story. Why? Because somewhere along the line, somebody in Hollywood helped fund that thing and, and put this in there. I read uh, an interview with the guy who did one of the, was it Avengers 2 movie or one of those? He was one of the producers. And it's like he said, I'll never do it again because you have your vision, but when someone else is paying for it, they're investing $135 million into it. What you filmed and what they end up showing are two different things. And he was so frustrated, he says, I'll never work with that studio again. You see, because they have an agenda. To embed things in your mind while we're in an alpha state, because that's what happens, especially when you're watching television, which was invented by the Nazis. I was surprised to find that one out. It was invented, and, and it, it was Nazi law that every home, after the Nazis took over, every home was required to have a television by law in Nazi Germany. Now it's an American thing to have 10 of them in your house. You don't want to stray too far from the matrix, you know what I mean? Got to have that matrix handy so that you can get your daily rematrixifying, re rebooting in your brain. In ministry, I have seen a lot of ministers come out of nowhere and instantly gain superstar status. And all of a sudden, go from paupers to millionaires. And what they're preaching, some of it's pop psychology, some of it isn't the word at all. But the gatekeepers, if you will, to what's called Christian television, put them on. They can write the big checks. And there's evidence coming forth. In fact, I got a call this week from a guy that has been very big in promoting Christian TV and other things. And he said, I've come to the conclusion that the Illuminati are running all of it. And he's trying to create an alternate source for begin promoting the right things. In fact, he may end up putting biblical TV on this new network thing that he's doing. Now, Thomas said, you know, go watch a few videos. If you can stomach it, we'll work with you. Because <laughs> I'm not for the faint of heart sometimes. But it, I even noted that when Rick Wiles with True News God came and visited him, and he experienced the holiness of God and realized how undone he was. And God said, I want you to preach repentance. And so here's a guy that was a part of the established Christian networks that God calls to begin preaching repentance. So if anybody had an inside place to begin doing that, wouldn't that be someone who was actually working within the system? Oh, Brother Wiles, we're, we're so glad that you're going to, what you're doing it on? Repentance because judgment is coming. Nope, don't want it on the air. 
Nobody would allow him on the air. He tried to finance it and do it himself with an alternate, with an alternate way on satellite television, almost bankrupted his ministry because no, not one Christian broadcaster would allow his show to be on because it was about repentance and the judgment to come. We're sitting in a time that we are watching the prophecies of David Wilkerson come to pass. And we need to realize that the church then ostracized him because of what he was given by God. They would say, now, you're not allowed, Brother Wilkerson, to preach on prophecy or the judgment that's coming. Tell us about the cross and the switchblade. He got so frustrated that his books like The Vision and some of these others, he got, he got so fed up with the body of Christ, he said, forever take them out of publication. So in a time that we would really need them, used copies of his books are selling for $3,500 on eBay. We had one sent from us from Australia. Thank you, by the way. She said, it's beat up and it's taped together, but here it is. Thank you. I had the vision and, and, and the sequel to it in my library. And when we were dealing with all the occult down in Dixon, not only do, I, I think we went through, what, 40, 50 copies of Bill Sneblin's book on, on blood on the altar and on Freemasonry. And they just kept disappearing out of the church, even out of my locked office, locked office. They disappeared. I needed to write Bill and said, dude, your books vaporize. You need to print with different paper. We're not in the CIA. We need them to last. Well, all, all of Dave Wilkerson's books disappeared out of my library. Oh, man, I wish I had them today. Now, what's great is Mary found on YouTube that they're still broadcasting his old sermons, that he basically preaches you through the vision. Thank God for that. But the body of Christ so rejected it that some of the things now that we're seeing come to pass, we can't even get the words from the, a true prophet of God that was rejected by the majority of Christianity. Does that tell you the state that the body of Christ is in? I bet you he felt like Jeremiah. You read, you read Jeremiah's accounts and all the prophets of Baal were all preaching, everything's going to be good, everything's going to be great, there's going to be candy flowing from heaven. Is this going to be groovy gravy, baby? And he would walk in, they said, oh no. Come on, Jeremiah, tell us something good. You're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Wrath of God's coming, how's that sound for you? And he hated to do it. He was called the weeping prophet. It's like, turn, dumb, dumb. <laughs> oh, no, we got all these prophecies. Everything's going to be great. God's going to make you rich. God's going to do this. God's going to do that. God's going to pop your head. And there's some head bopping needs to go on in America today. Judgment needs to come. But guys, here's the deal. So, is it this? Is this it? Those whose minds have been split and been controlled have no hope. Those who have never heard the true gospel and the need for holiness and righteous living are going to be adjudged along with those that controlled their minds in the message of the church. Is that where we are today? Have we been handed that little thing you get Monopoly that says, go straight to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200, there's no hope? Or, wait for it. Is God about ready to judge the elite? Because I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm kind of like that old Jerry Clower joke about you know, him fighting a bobcat, he runs, you know, he's up in a tree fighting a bobcat, he finally yells down to his friend, shoot up amongst us because one of us need the relief. I trust the aim of my heavenly father. Even while God judged Egypt, there was a Goshen. Come on. 
Now we need to understand that the elite is a blending of both Jews and Gentiles. Everybody talks about it's Jews trying to take over the world. Isn't, isn't that the normal thing? When you understand the elite, there's 13 bloodlines, only one of them is Jewish. So it's one thirteenth Jewish. The others are Gentile bloodlines that both use the Kabbalah and all the Kabbalah is, is they took Jewish thought and wrapped it over the top of esoteric knowledge drawn from Babylon. In fact, I, I do agree with Peter Goodgame. I think the originator of, of Kabbalah was Rabbi Akiba in the second century. The same one that said Simon bar Kochba is Messiah that ended up in the destruction of Jerusalem. He's the originator, and I, I have run this across several experts to include some in Israel, that I believe because he, he saw the power of the Holy Spirit in the Messianic community, but yet he rejected Jesus. So what he did is he drew out of Babylon and created a pseudo-Holy Spirit type of power in Kabbalah. Even in Kabbalah, in the 52 names of God, one of them is Lucifer. How many know? No, no, no. <laughs> That doesn't work. And so they're, they're, they're blending both Kabbalah concepts and the secrets of the Watchers and the Nehesh class fallen angels. And they're, they're, the, the secret societies have used this to control the minds of men. And so many times when I deal with where we are and you know, in the seven churches in the book of Revelation, I always go to Laodicean church because I am sick and tired of the materialistic church. I walk with God, see my Lexus? Well, you can walk with the devil and have that. I want to see holiness. I want to see humility. You know where the Marines are the, the proud, the few, the brave, the remnant are the humble, the faithful, the few. But it's by walking with our God humbly. Hubris in America is destroying this nation. But instead of taking me to Laodicean church, the Spirit of God took me to the church before it. I want to go to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. Why the Philadelphia church? Because it's all about love. God is love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Isn't that what Philadelphia is supposed to stand for? Love? That may be part of where we're at right now. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy. Uh-oh. Anytime God starts talking about his holiness, there's some comeuppance coming. He that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. And so God, Jesus knows what's going on. But I want you to listen if this doesn't sound like the remnant today. Behold, I set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and has not denied my name. Now listen, and I, will, I hope every pastor that is, that is a part of the remnant in the world listens to me right now. They have been faithful while Christian television and what has been put on it. You see, Christian television originally was a mechanism to evangelize the world. Now it is being used by the elite to pervert the church. I have had pastors tell me, you don't understand the extreme pressure that I am on to match what's on Christian television. Why don't we have a coffee shop in church? And why can't we order our stuff right before praise and worship and, and sit there and drink our cappuccinos with the one finger out and then have our little pastries while we're doing praise and worship? You should eat before you come to church. Why don't we have this? Why don't we have that? Why aren't you doing it like so-and-so? The immense 
pressure. Many of these pastors, the ones that refuse to yield, in some instances, have lost up to 80% of their congregations. Everybody else wanted to go and follow the yellow brick road. Well, God's people said, I'm set on the pathway to Zion. And these pastors are saying, I've just got a little strength left. And all I can say is, I've held the fort. I've kept your word, and I have not denied who Jesus is. Heaven recognizes that right now, guys. The pastors that have felt deserted and alone, that have thought about giving up ministry, heaven took note. And Jesus is saying, I'm setting before you an open door. Many of them have had to shut down their churches and go to home fellowships because they can't even ha afford to have a church building anymore. But you know what? Semper Fi, they were faithful. They were God's Marines that stayed faithful. We're getting ready to enter into a time, guys. Judgment is coming. Thank God. Daddy, shoot up amongst us because one of us need to relief, and I trust your aim. Because he says, behold, you're about to get happy. Verse 9, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews but are not but do lie. I will make them to come and to worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved you. You stayed faithful to me. You stayed faithful to my word when nobody else would. I'm going to make them come to you and bow at your feet and recognize who you are. Now, I want to simplify this with the synagogue of Satan. People look at it, well, well, see, I told you it was the Jews. He said they say they are Jews but are not. That refers to something that did not, that had its epitus, if you will, during the time of Jesus. But we see it in the Da Vinci Code. They had the movie The Da Vinci Code. That there was a Gnostic lie about Jesus that he faked his death on the cross and then he ran off with Mary Magdalene into, into France and they had children. Isn't that the craziest thing you ever heard? Would men die for somebody like that? The early apostles died for the truth that Jesus was crucified, that he was buried, and that he rose again. They gave their lives for that truth. And that these people believe that the reason and every royal family, listen to this, guys, everybody is, you know, all infatuated with the royal family of England. Every one of us we're created equal by Almighty God. The only one that raises up above us is named Jesus of Nazareth because he was Almighty God come in the flesh who will sit on the, on, on the throne of David. But they believe that they have the divine right to rule because they are descendants of Jesus. At the very last scene in the, in the Da Vinci Code, they reveal, when they always, you, know, you always talk about you know, King Arthur hunting for the Holy Grail, in reality, that is a metaphor. The Holy Grail to them is the bloodline of Jesus amongst their ranks. And they have the divine right to rule over the earth. And out of these 13 bloodlines will come one who, the, who Nimrod will return in to rule because they're descendants of Jesus. And here we have Jesus setting in eternity, setting in the third heaven. He fills all time and space, and he's prophesying about them before the heresy most likely even existed. And he calls them the synagogue of Satan. The Illuminati is the synagogue of Satan. They say they are Jews, but they are not. Looks a little shinari to me right here. 
as well as Shinar Directive getting its comeuppance right here. Verse 10, listen to me, church. Behold, thou hast kept the word of my patience. We had to patiently endure faithfulness, and it took patience. It took patience. But to those who stayed faithful, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. I think this is God telling us that he's going to judge some things for our sake. You see, what a lot of preachers aren't taking into consideration, and we learned this from Chaplain Lindsey Williams, that the elite have wanted to take America out for a long, long time. Because the only nation that is stopping the new world order is us constitution-minded, Bible-toting, gun-toting believers. Come on now. That's the only thing. Because as long as we were here, the protective hand of God was here. And so they commenced about the turn of the 20th century as a part of the Shiner Directive to take America away from God. Because to do what they needed to do, they had to get God to lift his hand off of America. And how many know that that is really happening? God is beginning to lift us. We have not won a war since World War II. We have not won a war since we brought all these Nazis back into America to begin taking over all of our stuff. Let me tell you something. The progressive movement does not have a good track record. They were infatuated with Mussolini. They were infatuated with Hitler. In fact, before World War II, it was very politically correct to have Nazis involved with your stuff. Eugenics began in America, and Hitler and, and Hitler and them just took it and brought it to its logical conclusion. Before we were in the Cold War with the Soviet Union, and they, they, and they talk about you know, having the, uh, uh, the witch hunts for communists, well, part of the reason was the progressives thought it was very progressive to have communists in government in America. Kind of like today. Those same progressives are embedding Muslim Brotherhood members in key positions on national security. And so now we're actually having the foxes get together and tell us how to protect the hen house from the foxes. The progressives have the most lousy track record in history when this nation is concerned. They have gotten in bed with the, elite, with the elite. We're living in an oligarchy. You're not telling me that in America the only two viable candidates is a Bush and a Clinton. It's controlled, it's contrived. But our hope doesn't come from Washington. God may have to take care of Washington. Our hope does not come from a political system. God may need to have to take care of that political system. Our hope does not come from Wall Street. God may have to take care of Wall Street. Wall Street and, and the banks up there is what got us into this position. TV's not going to get you out of this situation. Because you can sit there and watch, watch television while Rome burns. Mesmerized. Or all the political spin, the PR, public relations. You know, most of those public relations and, and advertising agencies, there's, a, there's an awesome video by Al Neal where he deals with all this stuff. And it's amazing whether it's Park Avenue or somewhere in D.C., they always find the address to be 666. The, one of the biggest advertising agencies in America is at 666 Park Avenue in New York City. If I own the building, I'd change the address. But they're very proud. They put it in big red letters on the side. Red letters on the side. 666 Park Avenue. That's where they're drawing their power from. It's time to unplug all that. It's time to get rid of all that. My hope 
is in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. That's what's going to get us through. Almighty, and and because, guys, where, where in the world can you go? Because although God's going to judge America, the elite are going to reboot the world. The financial collapse that they want is going to be worldwide. They have to get it to work. They have got to collapse the entire world. Are you going to move to the moon? Or are you going to hold your ground and walk in the kingdom here? And be the few, the humble, God's remnant. I want to watch Almighty God bring them to their knees because I think we have this before we fully get to the Laodicean church. Hmm. Why is God putting two more books in my spirit? Well, because, Mike, you always have something to say. (laughs) I can do a tape. I don't need to write a book. Writing a book is three times as hard, more effective, but it's harder. Pick back up here in verse 11. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast to what thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he will go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, that cometh down from heaven, from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, I realize that, you know, these seven churches have been taught a lot of different ways. They've been taught as, as, as different periods within, from the time of Christ to now. They, they, sometimes they can be simultaneous, you know, happen simultaneously, that they have spoken to every generation and every century since the time of Christ. But God brought this to clarity to me for a reason. He's getting ready to judge the things, and that judgment may or may not happen in September. I have watched God frustrate the elite to the place that there's almost blood shooting out their eyes ever since about 2007. The economy was supposed to collapse in 2007. It was supposed to collapse in 2008. It was supposed to collapse in 2009. Now we're in 2015 and it's supposed to collapse again, yet there's a war among the elite that we have the BRICS nations that are tired of the elite ruling through the IMF and through the centralized banking system, and they're getting ready to set up their own so now they're in, a, they're in a conundrum. If they collapse the economy now, it may well, well position China to take over, which is actually fighting against them. Because once now that they've brought all this wealth out of America and put it into Asia, Asia says, we're never going to give it back. And their plan was to, to destroy America and bring it back as a, as a utopian, occultic, uh, 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 communistic utopia. As the phoenix comes up out of the ashes, they can't do that if those guys won't give it back and have created their own system. Huh. And so there's division. I will, God says, you're going to try to do all this? I will have you in derision. That's derision in the ranks, I believe. But this word, God says, I'll keep you. Here in Revelation, I'll keep you. Is te reu in the Greek, which means to attend to carefully, to guard. It's a metaphor to keep one in the state in which he is. So remnant, the state that you're supposed to be in, God can keep you no matter what else goes on around you. You see, I still got stuff to do. In America, I still got stuff to do. I've got books to write. I have got a broadcast center to build. I'm just now entering into my stride. Elite, you're getting in my way in the kingdom. And I'm going to start asking my father to remove you out of the way. There's a remnant to build. There's a remnant to empower. From right here in Marshfield, God's given me this mountain. I'm not moving. 
I may be old. I'm not quite as old as Caleb, but you know what? You young whippersnappers, get out of the way because I'm going to take this mountain. <laughs> Why we need this? The evangelical church has been led, led away from truth methodically and systematically for the last 100 years or more. The current church is not that faithful bride whose clothing or way of life is without spot and wrinkle. My goodness, we are tattered. We're missing more teeth than we have. We're unkept, unclean. You know, <laughs> I could see Jesus turning to Father saying, can we wait a little bit, Dad? <laughs> we need to go to work. She's a mess. Huh. And I've said this for a while. And listen to me. If you name the name of Jesus, you have two ways of getting right with God right now. One is repentance, that you really get on your knees and get right with God, and you're purified by the blood of Jesus because of repentance, or you can be tried by fire. Now, from this day forward, that is up to you. You set your course this day. I choose the blood of Jesus. I choose repentance. I choose self-correction instead of the fire of persecution. The current gospel being preached around the world is not the original gospel of the first century church. Therefore, we are far from taking the gospel to the entire world. We are no longer a people of the book. We have become a people of the last one-third of the book, and we don't even pay attention to it. We're like Thomas Jefferson. We cut out the things we don't like. If you're going to be a person of the book, you better start in Genesis and work your way back to Revelation because it's by one author and there is not one contradiction here. There may be contradictions in the minds of men but it's because they don't understand this is a spiritual book that takes the Holy Ghost to be able to understand. And it's built precept upon precept, line upon line. And it is one and it is uniform. I thought Dr. John Gard did an outstanding job in his book called Christian Fruit, Jewish Roots, that he shows that every major doctrine and thing that we think is New Testament originated in the Torah. We're drawing from that. The true church is. Today's church is clueless about the first two-thirds of God's revelation and have either been trained to dismiss it or purposely ignorant of it. We have got some explaining to do, and we've got some growing to do. We need the elite to be shaken to the very core and for, the, and for a remnant revival based upon the full counsel of God's word. So here's what we're going to do today, because it's going to take me another, at least another session. Now here's some things that I want to break the witchcraft spell over America today especially over the remnant. Now, as before I do this, I, I need to say a couple of words. The spiritual filth in America is real. And it has reached the nostrils of God. I can't stomach it. I can't, I can't you know, I don't know how God has stomached it as long as he has. It's bad and it's going to get worse. We need to ask, the, does God need to judge America? Yes, but in that judgment, would the righteous judgment be to destroy the remnant right along with those who held them captive? Would it be that, or would it be that we see it described in Revelation 3 that the Almighty God will bring them to their knees and allow the faithful the freedom to serve him? Now, guys, there are some hard times coming ahead. I don't know exactly when they're going to transpire. Head of households, listen to me. You need to have some food on hand. Because as social unrest goes, there's only enough food in the, in the local grocery stores for one and a half days. We need to start setting some stuff aside. May need to go to Sam's and start getting those big bags of beans when you need just a little one. Set some stuff aside to have a couple months, at least. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you what you need to do. But if you, if you do a little over time and it begins to build up, when you have to hunker down, you can hunker down where you are and things be okay. 
Don't always trust the banks. They're finding that out in Greece, aren't they? Better to have some cash. You know, it's coming to the time it might not be bad to have some cash stuffed stuff underneath the mattress. Follow the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the righteous can see the signs of the times and prepare. And if we see the signs of time and, and, and uh, set in our hearts to prepare, then God can give us special blessings to help in the preparation. Don't take those blessings and try to buy the next fancy thing to be more materialistic. If God's given you extra stuff, start preparing with it instead of wasting it on things on the world. We have got to be prepared, spirit, soul, and body, guys. This may happen in 2015. It could happen in 2016. It can happen even in 2020 and beyond. I believe, guys, and listen to me, this is in the hands of God. They are going to eventually move into a one-world monetary system, a one-world religion, and a one-world government. When they do it is not in their hands. It is still in the hands of God. They will get it done when God allows and not one minute before. It is time now to get deeper in the wood never, uh, than never before. It is time to learn how to stand in your faith and be ready to give a reason for the hope that's in you. It's time to quit saying, one of these days I'm going to learn. It's going to be, I need to get in the word now. I need to get established now. I need to draw close to God now. I need to seek him while he may be found. Because after the prophecy hits the fan, it may be too late. Seek him now. Get close to him now. Let him change you now. Better now than later. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I lay before you the Shinar Directive. I lay before you what the, what the esoteric societies and the secret societies have done in America and around the world. Father, from the political scene to the financial scene to the entertainment scene, that they have mind-controlled us. Father, look at the atrocities of MKUltra, the Monarch, and the Montauk projects. Father, look at the horrible things they did in the 60s. Father, behold, they took prayer out of school. They legalized the sacrifice of the most innocent on the planet to Molech. Father, behold it. And Father, right now, I ask two things. Father, I ask that you would judge the elite for their sins. Father, what they have done, I know, has come up before your nostrils in heaven. Father, right now, we as the body of Christ, we ask you to judge them. We, Father, and all the judgment, Father, let it fall on their heads. Father, let not the innocent receive the judgment for what the elite have done. But, Father, judge them. Father, let spot judgment be done with the accuracy of the greatest smart bomb that has ever been invented by man. Father, with that accuracy, pinpoint accuracy, Father. Let it fall upon Hollywood. Let it fall upon the international bankers. Father, let it fall upon the elite wherever they are. Father, judge them for their wickedness. And, Father, let them gnash their teeth and let them confess that there is a God in heaven who is still in control. Now, Father, as an ambassador of the kingdom of God on earth, Father, I judge the witchcraft spell that has put America into a trance. That we have been in a, a blending of, of uh, ultimate pharmacia, that is the blending of science and sorcery, of technology and sorcery. Father, I judge it in the name of Jesus. And Father, over your people who are called by your name, Father. I command that witchcraft sting and that sorcery that alters the minds of your people. I command those things to be broke right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I ask that it would ripple forth out of Marshfield and that it would cover this entire planet, Father God, that the techno stupor would stop among your people. And Father, that you would begin awakening the remnant to rise up in the power of the kingdom, the power of your word, and the power of the name of Jesus. And Father, we come into agreement. And Father, I repent 
in my life and all those associated with biblical life on their behalf, Father, I repent of all the times that I let the witchcraft of Hollywood, the witchcraft of financial Babylon, the witchcraft of political Babylon, the witchcraft of religious Babylon, mystery Babylon. Father, I repent for the times that I allowed it to influence me. I ask that that would be covered by the blood of Jesus. Father, forgive me of my sins and the sins of my fathers. Now, Father, I also, in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask forgiveness of the sins of America. I ask, for, I ask for the forgiveness of the sins of the Supreme Court of America, for the president, for his cabinet, for everyone in political power in this nation. Father, I cover their iniquity with the blood of Jesus. And Father, I command that iniquity force to be abated from this day forward. Father, pull the plug out of their power. And Father, release a refreshing to the remnant that we would be bold as a lion and that we would be moving the boldness of the early church and moving kingdom power. Father, let us embrace your ways. Father, let us embrace your commandments. Let us embrace the cross of Christ. Let us embrace the name of Jesus and let us embrace the kingdom of God and be citizens of it first than Americans second. And Father, I ask this with absolute confidence today. I have come boldly before the throne of grace that I might receive help in a time of need. And Father, look what they're trying to do and how they're hurting the innocent. How they have misled and misguided and put witchcraft spells on those that are helpless to resist. And Father, I ask for divine judgment in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare that let it be so, Father. Let it be done in Jesus' name.